guys, it's Davin here from brewbits.com. Behind the camera as usual we got James. Say hello James. Right, as you noticed I've got a knife in my hand and by the side of me I've got a lovely load of rhubarb. So I thought we would make some rhubarb wine. So, oh, look at this lovely stretch of rhubarb. So we've got a big broad leaf if you've never done rhubarb wine before and we've got a lovely stalk. So, the leaf is poisonous. Don't want the leaf. And this little end here, this is where it was joined on. We can get rid of that as well. This is what we're after. So some lovely stalks of rhubarb. And we're after about three pound in weight. Just mind your fingers, don't catch your fingers. There might be a little bit of slug damage to some of them. That's not a huge issue. You keep going until you've got about three pounds worth. Good little tip for you whilst I'm down here. The leaves, if you've got a load of issues with um, weeds around your rhubarb, What I do great weed suppressant. Anyway, I'm going to carry on picking a few more stalks and then we'll go to the kitchen and start making some rhubarb wine. Now we've got our rhubarb in from the garden. You can see there might be a couple of bits of mud or bits of extra leaf or where slugs have been crawling over them, but hey, this is nature. Uh, we're going to give our rhubarb a quick little swill off just to get rid of any mud or any bugs or anything like that. A cold running tap works wonders, and so does just a dishcloth. Oh, and the inaugural beer to keep you going. Uh, absolutely necessary. It didn't take very long to Clean up our rhubarb. And all I'm going to do now is just simply chop it into inchish, two and a half centimetres of long chunks. Not really too fast. Some might be a bit bigger, some might be a bit smaller. And we need three pounds. I'm going to be a little bit fussy because come on in, James, see if you can get a good looking on this. Sometimes they get a little bit old and they get a little bit holy and they get a bit spongy that way. Cut through this one, you know what I mean? It gets really spongy. We don't really want this. There's not a huge amount of lovely juiciness in it. What we really want is one that's lovely and solid like that new, new sponginess. So that bit into the recycling. I've got three pounds, three pounds and a little bit left over. So I think we know what I'm having for my tea. Rhubarb crumble, and then we've got uh, two lots here. So one is absolutely lovely, chunky, sweet, juicy pieces. And this one here is not quite so lovely, chunky, sweet, and juicy bits. I know I got rid of most of these, but these aren't quite as bad as the one I showed you earlier. So I'm gonna use two different methods on these wines. So from now, we're gonna split in, and we're gonna do two videos. This one here is going to be rhubarb wine cooked my usual traditional method. And this one is using the slightly older uh, bits and I'm going to make rhubarb wine in a slightly different way with that. So, let's talk about what else you're going to need. So this is my second method of making rhubarb wine and this is what you're going to need. A couple of other bits and bobs. You are going to need a big pot that's going to hold at least a gallon um, of water plus the rhubarb. So it needs to be quite a big pan. We're going to need a brewing bucket for a little bit later to brew everything in. And to finish everything off, we're going to need a demijohn. But in the way of ingredients, obviously with our rhubarb, we're going to need some sugars. And here I've got one and a half pounds of supermarket sugar. Uh, this is going to add a sweetness to the finished wine, but if we use a full three pounds of this, it could possibly be too sweet. 
So what we're gonna use here is a pound and a half of brewing sugar. And this will allow the yeast to go munch, 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 eat all that sugar, turn it all into lovely alcohol, but without adding any extra sweetness. Gonna need a couple of other bits and bobs. We're gonna need some cleaner and steriliser. This is gonna help us to clean and sterilise everything. We're gonna need some yeast nutrient. That allows the yeast to really nibble away and do their job as efficiently as possible. Some pectin eggs. Pectin, because we're cooking our rhubarb, is going to be released and in a jam, absolutely fantastic. It's what causes the jam to set. But in this, it will cause a haziness in the finished wine, so we don't need that. And this pectolase will stop that from happening. And then lastly, we've got some Camden tablets and they'll be used a little bit later on in the process. And of course we need some yeast in here. I'm just using an all-purpose white wine yeast. A couple of other bits and bobs. I've got a straining bag, a long spoon that's not wooden, a siphon and a hydrometer. And this tells us um, how much sugar is left in our wine, and whether it's safe to bottle. And will also be used to work out a calculation to work out how much alcohol is in our finished one. Uh, right, so I think that's everything. Oh, important to keep uh, some liquid to keep your uh, vocal cords going. So um, let's get brewing. We're going to need one gallon, four and a half litres or eight pints of boiling water. So I'm going to put the kettle on first of all. I've already got four litres in, so this is the last half a litre. Beautiful. And it's in the hob, it's boiling away, a nice rolling boil. Beautiful like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to gently... Whoa, that was hot. Put our rhubarb in. And we're going to cook this away until the rhubarb is falling apart. Come on in James and have a look at this because our rhubarb and water have been simmering away now for about 25 minutes. You can see all the pinky redness has gone from our rhubarb and we're just left with this lovely liquid. So, I prepared here a bucket, I've sterilised it, and uh, I've, ours has got a little cool port, right, pool cord even, a cool port. If yours hasn't, then grab yourself some pegs and quite easily pop them around to stop it going in. And all we're going to do, very gently, because this is very hot, we'll get some splashy bits, so make sure your face is well back. I didn't need those, but you wet me well. We're just going to lift it up now. Like so, you get in there, James, have a lovely look at that gorgeous pink liquid because that's exactly what we're needing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on a colander. Uh, I'm going to find a colander a second. Aha, even better, a sieve. Put that in a sieve like that. And I'm just gonna let it drain for a few minutes, let all that lovely juice run out. Beautiful, most of our juice has already come out. So you might wanna have a, a tiny little squeeze just to see a little bit more, just a little bit. Right, so our next thing then is we're going to add our sugar into it and dissolve our sugar. So in goes first the supermarket granulated sugar. That's to add the sweetness as well as to give the yeast something to munch on. And now goes our dextrose. This is what the yeast are going to absolutely adore to munch on but it's not really gonna add any level of sweetness. Now we get that in and we give that a good stir. It's really hot so it shouldn't take too long. Make sure it's all dissolved. Look at that beautiful color.
Lovely. We're now going to put the lid on and we're going to wait for this to cool down to 20 degrees C. So we'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, it takes a little bit of time to cool down, but come and have a look at this, James, because this is lovely. Look at the gorgeous colour on that. Now down here, I've taken a sample in our trial jar and using an hydrometer, we're checking the amount of sugar uh, that's in our liquid. And if this actually ferments out fully, as it should do, we should be looking at getting a brew here of about 13%. So I've sterilized everything before. I did that by the way. So now we've got a couple of things that we need to put in. We've got our yeast, we've got our pectolase, and we've got our yeast nutrient. So first of all, I'm gonna pop in the pectolase. And what this does is this is a powder. And I think as I said yesterday, that's um, because we've boiled the rhubarb, any pectin that's been created, which is brilliant for setting jam, will uh, potentially cause a real haze in the finished wine. So this is what pectolase does, gets rid of it. Just a teaspoon in it goes. The yeast nutrient, got a brand new pot here, so let's pop the top off. Oh my goodness, that's tight. And again, yeast nutrients, just a powder. And in that goes. Now yeast nutrient is a bit like uh, you and me, we all need our vitamins, and it's just basically some vitamins that help the yeast uh, do their job really efficiently. And then we give this a little bit of a stir in. Cool. Now the last thing to do is take our yeast in here. I'm just using an all-purpose white wine yeast from Lauvin. And then we're just gonna literally sprinkle this on the top like so, and then let it do its thing. Cracking. So, top goes on loosely. We'll put a thermometer on the top so we can check its temperature. And now this goes in my warm cupboard at 20 degrees C for a week. Hey guys, it may have only been a few seconds for you, but for me it's been a whole week. And in here we've got our rhubarb wine. Now come on and have a look at this, James. So, this has been fermenting now about 20 degrees C for a week, and now it's time, because it's really slowed down, you can see there's very little activity happening, to transfer it to our demijohn. Back to me, James. Because here, oh, let me pop this out. I have my demijohn, which I've sterilized. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna simply siphon our wine from our bucket into our demijohn. So, here I've got basically a simple siphon on this end, James, come in and have a look. This is a sediment trap because in the bottom of the bucket here, I don't know if you can see, there might be able to, there is a layer of sediment and hopefully this little thing will help prevent getting any of that horrible gunk into our demijohn. So one of the methods we do is that goes in gently under the surface and this end we give a good suck until we get the wine almost to the end to us. And then that goes down into our demijohn all the way down in, so you don't get any splashing. And now it starts filling up. So, so every now and then I get a few comments down below saying, oh, you've been sucking the wine through, you've just put your lips around the end of the pipe. There's only a couple of bacteria that are actually going to affect the wine, and none of those are in my mouth. Uh, any bacteria that is in my mouth that was on the end of there doesn't really worry very much anyway because that's all going to be killed off by the alcohol. But if that does concern you, then you need one of these little babies. This is called an auto siphon. And the way the auto siphon works is it's got a plunger. So you pop this end down in the wine, it's got a little one way valve, you sucky suck, and the flow starts going. Obviously, this end of the pipe here would be attached. To this end of the pipe here and that gets rid of that problem of putting your lips around at the end of the pipe. So it just takes a few moments for the wine to fill up in the dirty John. Take your time. Whilst you're taking the time make sure you've got a nice drink to have. So it's starting to fill up and we want it to get to the bottom of the or the top of the shoulder the bottom of the neck just there 
and it catches up on you pretty darn quickly as it gets this close. Almost there. Perfect. So we've still got a, a little bit of wine left in our uh, bucket, so we're not going to put that to waste. Here we've got a sterilized bottle. And I'm just literally, oh, that's it. Ah, <laughs> not very much at all. Uh, actually, I've still got some left, so I'll siphon this out now. So as you can see, there's a bit of sediment left in the bottom of the bucket. So the sediment trap did its job. So get rid of that, we don't need that. And what we've left down here is we've left with our demi job. Get rid of the table. And so this is our lovely wine. Now the fermentation in this has really, really slowed down. This is why we're transferring it from the bucket to the demijohn. Because the demijohn, once we've put our airlock in, has less um, surface area potentially for any bugs, nasties, and anything like that to get into our wine. So come in here, James, and have a quick look at my airlock. As you can see, my bottom two uh, bubbles are half filled with a sterilizing solution, or in this case, I'm using sodium metabisulfate solution. And that now literally just goes in the top. If we use any more than that in the bottom of the bubbler, then what you can find is it can create too much pressure in the demijohn, and you end up with a fizzy wine, and that helps, or that prevents um, the clearing of the wine a little bit further down the line. So what do we do with this now? This now goes back into my warm cupboard at about 20 degrees. Uh, that will allow the fermentation to finish and that will be hopefully about a couple of weeks time. Um, right, what then? Well, then we move it somewhere a little bit cooler to clear and there will probably be a good amount of sediment in the bottom. And once it's started to clear, we rack it off of that sediment. And this is where this comes in. Because this, you'll find when you rack it off, all that sediment at the bottom will be gone into a nice new clean demijohn. You can see how to rack off in one of our other videos. Uh, there will be a gap left at the top. And this is what you do with this. You basically pour this in and that tops it up. Some people say, oh, can't I just use water? Would you water down a cup of tea or a cup of coffee after you've made it and you poured the milk in? No, of course you won't. Um, so this is a way of topping up with some leftover juice. So what do we do with this? Well, this goes in the fridge um, and then that will stay nice and stable in the fridge, cold, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, put a label on it though so granny doesn't come in and go, oh, what's this? And that nice little set. Um, this, as I said then, just to recap, goes back into our warm cupboard for another two weeks to finish fermenting and the bubbler will bubble away nice and gently. Um, after the two weeks, we're gonna rack it off the sediment at the bottom, move it then to somewhere nice and cool um, and allow it to clear. Once it's clear, we're then gonna put it into bottles, wait for six months, pop it open, and have a good old knees up. So, until then, back into my warm cupboard.